how do we find players? Obviously, we find them through AAU. We find them through high school tournaments and games. You know, I may go uh, to Leesville Road to see one kid, and in the process of the game, I see another kid from Wakefield. Oh, I you know, need to follow up on that guy. Maybe I go to see a senior, and there's a junior on his team. I discover that guy. Uh, you know, there's some showcase events. I'm not personally as high on those as I am. Uh, and I would say, and I, it, like, sometimes travel basketball gets a less than favorable rap, uh, I think, like anything else. I think there's some really good travel basketball, and there's some that's less than good. Um, so I don't, I'm not passing judgment on the whole thing. I will say, and not because I'm here today, but because I observe all of these different teams across really the eastern United States. WCBA does a great job of working with young people and trying not just to be about getting a trophy, that's important, but not just about that or not just about the game, but also trying to teach you something in the process, uh, that's important, you know. but. Being with a good program, not jumping around, I tell you, you know, like there's massive transferring going on at the collegiate level. Well, you know, it goes on at the high school and the AAU level as well. And it makes us a little wary when one year a kid's with WCBA and the next year he's with Garner Road and the next year he's with whoever. <laughs> you know, that that's a somewhat of a red flag, like why does he keep changing teams? Or one year he's at Broughton and the next year he's at Enloe and the next year he's at Word of God. Well, why does this guy keep changing schools? There may be a perfectly legitimate reason, but trust me, we're going to dig into that and, and try to figure it out. Why does this guy keep changing schools? Can he not get along with the coaches? Is he getting into trouble? Or has his family actually moved from one district to another? Or have they decided now that you know private is the route they want to go as opposed to, there may be le perfectly legitimate reasons, but it is a red flag if the same guy changes multiple AAU teams and multiple high schools, you know, what's going on? And if you are, you know, if you're seven feet tall and can run and jump and shoot threes like a guard, yeah, if you're KD, you could probably get away with transferring a few schools and somebody's still going to take you. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys in this room play. I don't know if we have any KDs. Okay? We've got some good players. I don't know if we got any KDs. All right? So uh, we're going to look for players all the time. We get, okay, we're Division Three. Okay? We're Division Three. Uh, we are the largest NCAA division. Division I has about 350 schools, Division II about 250, Division III has about 450 schools. I get inundated daily with emails from players, parents, and coaches. Please take a look at this highlight. Here's the link to YouTube. Look at my son, my player. Please look at my tape. I'm interested in coming there. I, 350 days a year, 360 days a year, I probably get 10 emails a day. I can't look at all of it. If you're 6'8", I'm probably a little quicker to look at it than if you're 5'11". That's the nature of it. If you live in North Carolina, I'm a lot quicker to look at it than if you live in Colorado. That's the nature of it. But my point is, we get an awful lot of stuff. I'm a lot more likely to look at it if your high school coach were to send it to me as opposed to mom or dad. No disrespect to any moms or dads, but I got three boys of my own, and trust me, I, like I know, those are our babies, right? It, like Nobody loves them more than us, and when you get something from mom or dad, doesn't mean that the guy can't play, it just means I need to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt that if a coach sends it to me, and if it's a coach that I know, and I know a lot of coaches, then I know how to take that, too. If they're familiar with our program, like I've had coaches, high school coaches, call me or send me something via email and say, Coach, this guy can play for you. I said, really? Well, when's the last time you saw us play? 
because we ain't on TV. You know, like, when's the last time you saw my team play? How do you know he can play for me? If there's somebody who is, that I'm familiar with and they're familiar with us, and they know a player, maybe a player or two who have come from Wilmington, and he's calling me about a player in Wilmington. Well, he knows the type of player that we've gotten. Okay, so I put a little more trust in that. Um, but the best thing that you can do is be your best all the time. Play hard. That is one of the most simple things that you can do, you would think. It doesn't require height or quickness or talent necessarily to play hard, but trust me, I go to a lot of games and a lot of practices. I went to a practice here in Raleigh. I won't say where. I went to a practice here in Raleigh this year, a high school practice, to see a specific kid play to practice. And I would say he went about 40% most of the practice. And after the practice, I was like, you know, you, you knew I was coming, right? <laughs> and he, he knew. And I said, is that as hard as you want to go? Like, that's, and he kind of didn't have an answer. And I'm like, if you knew I was coming and you were trying to impress me, and that's like, how hard are you going to go when I get you? Um, just play hard. Be a great teammate. Be a great teammate. Play hard and play to the best of your ability every time you step out. You're not going to make every shot. I don't care how good a shooter you are, you're not going to make every shot. I don't care whether you make every shot. I can observe you, and I think most of the guys who do what I do can observe you. And you may have an off day. We, we can figure that part out. I want to see how you react when you don't put the ball in the basket. I want to see what else can you do. Can you, can you hit the open man? Can you stop somebody from scoring? Can you, de can you defend and rebound? Can you communicate? All those other things, and you just got to keep putting yourself out there. And for some guys, it happens really early. You know, some guys get discovered in the eighth and the ninth and the tenth grade, and other guys don't emerge until later in their junior or senior year. And then you've got to figure out if I'm one of those thousand freshmen in a year that get to go play in Division I somewhere. You know, then you're really special and you're really fortunate, and that's great. And I hope, you know, for a lot of you, if that's what you dream about, that it works out. But there are an awful lot more guys who are below that line, and, you know, don't, I would encourage you not to burn any bridges. You know, I've had a lot of guys, you know, who over the year, I've been doing this a long time, uh, over the years, guys who have, yeah, coach, you know, I, I think I'm going to wait and I'm going to, I'm probably going to end up at ECU or wherever they, you know, UNCW. Or, and then at the end of the year, they don't have anything. And by then, I've already filled those spots. And now, those guys who thought they were at a certain level, some of them end up with nothing. And so, you know, it's a, it's a long process and, and, um, I'm going to stop here and let you guys ask questions because I want it to be, you know, I want to give you the information that you want. But uh, hopefully that gives you some idea of the path that you're on. And I will say those 550 or 600,000 high school players, there are more of you, although the numbers are hard to track, there are more of you playing travel basketball than there are playing high school basketball. Because I don't know in this room. But if you gathered every, and looked around the room and said, well, that guy or that guy, they didn't play on their high school team. They either got cut, they got kicked off, whatever. They're not playing high school best, so they're not counting, no, but they're still playing on travel teams all over the place. So the numbers of this kind of group nationally is greater than the 550 or 600,000. So what are you going to do? And the last thing I'll say, and then I'll open up the questions. We talk to our players about this. And as you attempt to get better where you are, better on the team that you're on, better on your high school team, and hopefully maybe get recruited, when and how well do you do the unrequired work? It's great if you come to practice two or three times a week and you play three or four games on the weekends. 
great. What else are you doing? Because if that's all you're doing, probably it's not going to happen for you. And I tell our players that too. If you come to practice every day, that's great. My whole team comes to practice every day. What else are you doing? Are you getting in early? Are you staying late? Are you coming in at 6 in the morning before class? Are you coming at 11 a.m. between classes? What else are you doing? The unrequired work is where you will separate yourself. You gotta, you gotta put in some extra work. So 